This review has been made possible by Toyota of Naperville. As you know, Toyota has tons of brand new Toyotas available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to toyotaofnaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. All right, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2009 Ford Mustang convertible. Up front is a 4.0 liter V6 and down below is a five speed automatic transmission. Now I'm super excited to be driving this here Mustang for two reasons. First of all, it's a convertible and the weather here in Chicago is slowly starting to turn towards spring. Today is March 12th, so maybe I'm jumping the gun a little bit, but it's always exciting to drive a convertible. The second reason is the fact that I've never driven a Mustang in this spec before. I've never done a convertible Mustang, and I've never done a V6 automatic. I've done a V8 automatic, I've done a V8 manual, I've done an inline six manual, but I haven't done the V6 automatic yet. So let's see how it stacks up. Well, let's get back to that 4.0 liter V6. That is quite the hefty, hunky, chunky boy for being a V6, a 4.0 liter V6 that's really edging on the ceiling for V6 displacements, or at least what you would commonly find in vehicles this day and age. The 4.0 liter V6 makes 210 horsepower, 240 foot-pounds of torque, and gets 16 miles to the gallon in the city, 24 on the highway. But before we do a poll, it is still March here in Chicago, uh, so I will need to change here for a second. All right, now I am ready. And please forgive me, my GoPro mount has decided to identify as a wet noodle today, so this might get interesting. But 4.0 liter V6. <laughs> Spun the tires a little bit. Like I said, it is a little chilly today. Uh, I think it's 45 degrees, so not the warmest of temperatures, but it, it gets up and gets out of its own way, and it's enough for cruising here in the sun. I mean, I'll talk about it a little bit later on, but this is how this car should be driven, right here. This is the exact position, and honestly, this is where the car feels the most natural and the most comfortable. I'm having a blast. I'm really enjoying this. Just nice, light, and easy to drive. The steering is nice and light. We'll talk about the transmission here in a second, but overall, man, I, I really don't have any complaints. No, it's not going to throw down crazy mile times, but at the end of the day, who really cares, man? It's just fun. Just have some fun, smile a little bit. If you're thinking about commenting, oh, it's an automatic V6, you have every right to comment that, but before you do that, just open a window and just like breathe or like get out of your room for a second. Just smile a little bit, come on. It's just fun, who cares? Now, like I said, paired to it is a five-speed automatic transmission. And so, would I want this to be manual? Of course, of course I would want a manual, but at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you why I think that's okay that it's automatic here in this particular Mustang. It shifts all right, it's a clunky Ford automatic transmission from 12 years ago. It doesn't really have that pep in its step, that I expect from modern automatic transmissions. It's pretty sloppy. Sometimes it'll sort of catch you at a weird moment and shift or downshift in a parking lot. And I'm genuinely not a huge fan of it, but it's also not the end of the world. It is shifting, the car is moving, and it's not too noticeable. I think I'm just a little nitpicky. Last but not least about this here Mustang is the fact that it is rear wheel drive. And of course you gotta love a rear wheel drive convertible. So let's talk about the interior. We have quite a bit to go through in here. Some things I really like and some things I really don't. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges. On the left is my tachometer. In the center is my fuel and coolant temperature. And on the right is my speedometer. I like the sort of retro lettering that they did on these gauges. This fifth generation Mustang was sort of supposed to be a throwback to the 60s Mustang, and that's very evident here in the gauge cluster, and I really, really like it. On the steering wheel, on the left and right are my cruise control options, and that's it. Steering wheel is very plain, very simple, and again, sort of echoes the 60s. However, there is an airbag in the middle, which I like, but 
the outside of the steering wheel has definitely seen better days. It's starting to come apart. It's starting to look like the surface of the moon a little bit, which is a little bit disheartening because this car only has 78,000 miles on it, which is still relatively low mileage for a vehicle like this. That's where you really start to see Ford's kind of iffy build quality. And it definitely starts with the steering wheel, but that's not the last place that we see that. To the left of me at my headlight switches and gauge dimmer switches. And on the door, I have my power mirrors up top, power locks in the middle and power windows at the bottom. Interestingly enough, I only have one rear power window switch. So they're for the little wing windows, I like to call them behind the big main windows. And you can only roll them up and down together. You can't do them individually, which I think is smart. You know, every once in a while, you'll see a convertible rolling around with one of the wedge windows up and it looks all weird. But before we get on with the rest of the video, I wanna say thank you to the people who made this video possible. First up, cashforcars.com wants to buy your car. They will buy your car with a clean title, salvage title, running, non-running, whatever it may be. You can get your free quote by clicking the link in the description below. Cashforcars.com is the easiest way to sell your car. Within a couple of clicks, they'll come pick up your car in less than 24 hours. You don't even have to leave the couch and it's absolutely awesome. Next up, we have con plates. The con plate is a suction cup mount for your license plate when you don't wanna mount it to the front of your car. If you have to legally have a front license plate like you do here in Illinois, but you don't wanna stick it on the front of your car, you think it's ugly, you wanna take it off for car shows, whatever it may be, you can actually just put your license plate into the suction cup holder and put it in your front windshield when driving around to remain legal. You can get your con plate in the description below and every sale helps out the channel so make sure your car looks good with con plates last but not least i want to talk about the fixed obd2 sensor now this is a bluetooth sensor that you plug into your obd2 port on your car and it gives you a ton of cool information like your check engine lights how to fix your check engine lights approximately how much it should cost maintenance intervals like oil change tire rotation brake pads when you should change that stuff out this is absolutely fantastic for anyone into cars or anyone looking to get into mechanics Fixed is offering my viewers a discount through that link, so go check it out and again, help support the channel. But with all that out of the way, let's get on with the review. Moving into the center, we just have two giant climate control vents and that's it. That's like the main show here. A little bit down below that, I do have a 12 volt outlet, hazard switch, and my passenger airbag light. And then the radio itself, very typical Ford mid 2000s radio. You'll find this in like the Ford Freestyle and the Taurus and pretty much every other Ford product from that era. I do have CD and it does say MP3. So there is an aux port, which is inside the center console. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Heating and air conditioning controls, very rudimentary, very basic. And at the bottom of the center console, we have the AC rear defroster and recirculating button. Then we have the shifter. Now the shifter is again, very retro. I like the lettering on the side of the shifter and I like the overall feeling of the shifter. It is plasticky, it is cheap. However, it doesn't really bother me all that much. A little bit of build quality issue here, but I'm less bothered by this than I am the steering wheel. Cause I really only touched the shifter once. Then we do have two cup holders. So we will do a big friggin' bottle test. And while the front one fails, the rear front cup holder passes. Yeah, that's right. The 09 Mustang convertible automatic V6 passes the big friggin' bottle test. This is the sportiest car to pass the big friggin' bottle test. The bottle actually stays in there quite snug, easy to get in and out, and I'm very, very impressed. Then we have the little center armrest opens up another 12 volt outlet and this is where you'll find your aux input which is nice for 2009. now we got to talk about the seats the seats are nice and comfortable they don't really have high bolsters they're definitely more comfort oriented than sport oriented and i like that a lot and a little fun fact for you after 2008 ford started incorporating soybeans into the construction of their seats, part of the fabric. This is actually a practice that Ford has been doing for almost 90 years. Back in the 40s, they had a concept car that was mainly built out of soybeans. And ever since then, Ford and soybeans have had a very interesting relationship, being used in parts of the Model T and so on and so forth. So actually well over a hundred years, but the soybean concept car came in the forties. So just a little fun fact for you, they feel completely normal. If you didn't tell me that these were partially soybean, I would never know. I read a couple of forum posts and 
pretty much everyone agrees that it doesn't make it that big of a difference. But speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's do a back seat review. You guys know I really dislike getting into coupe back seats. All right, so getting in the back seat here, little lever on the back of the seat right here. Gonna try to, the nice thing about the convertible is you can just stand right up. Close this. Oof. Ow, ow, buckle in my hip, buckle in my hip. Oof, ooey wooey. So this back seat is not ideal. I am a bigger person though, and honestly, with the top down, it's manageable. With the top up, I don't think it would be. I don't get any amenities back here. There is no middle seat back here. It is just a two plus two, so you can take a maximum of four people. However, I do have full seat belts and things like that. And honestly, back here on a sunny day, I mean, I don't think anything beats it. Now, in the middle of the winter, with three inches of snow on the ground, shoved back here with my big puffy winter coat, uh, not ideal. But for a summer fun car, you really don't need that much room. And, and the passenger can scoot up a little bit and the driver can scoot up a little bit to accommodate me a little bit better. But besides that, I mean, like, this is just fun. Look at this. I'm on a roller coaster. Whee! I don't know. I think it's fun. I think it's, it's a fine back seat for what it is. If you have a family, you shouldn't be owning a car like this. Or you should own another car and then have this as the weekend car. But yeah. Well, let's talk about the trunk real quick. So one thing right off the bat that I already don't like about the trunk is the fact that there is no interior door popper or trunk popper more so. So you have to pop it from back here. And that being said, it's actually a decent sized trunk for a convertible vehicle. You have to remember the convertible top's gotta go somewhere and it does go back there, but all the mechanisms for the power and stuff have to go somewhere. And so that being said, this is enough for your beach towel and your beach bag, maybe a couple of beverages, things like that. This is enough space. It's not huge, but it's enough. When you rent one of these, when you go to Orlando, Florida, you're gonna be able to fit your luggage back here pretty much without much issue. So let's talk about the convertible top real quick because this is the convertible. So I have two hooks up here and then there's a power button of which I can stop. It's not one touch. Now we gotta talk about the looks, and I really like the look of this Mustang. I like the fact that it's so basic and so simple. It's not over-designed. It doesn't have a million air vents that it doesn't need. It's just a simple, fun, cruising car. And so, getting on to my final thoughts, I really like this Mustang. I know as a car enthusiast, I shouldn't. And honestly, if it were my money, I wouldn't buy this car because I would want the more higher performance Mustang. I would want a 5.0, I would want a manual, I would really want a GT350 is what I actually want. But as a car, I think this really captures the essence of the very first year Mustang. Remember, when the Mustang originally came out, it didn't have a V8, they added a V8 really quickly afterwards, but the very first 1964 and a half Mustang came with a straight six and a dogleg three-speed transmission. And that car, because I reviewed a 65 with the straight six and the three-speed, I fell in love with that car. Look at us driving around in that car at night. So classic. It's just a fun cruising car. It wasn't meant to break records. It wasn't meant to go down the drag strip and get blistering times. It wasn't meant to go around the racetrack like the more modern Mustangs are. That car was meant to be filled with a bunch of your friends to go down to the corner ice cream parlor and get a sundae. That's what that car was really built to do and it was built to look good doing that. And that's exactly how I feel about this car the convertible top, you get a couple friends in here, you go to the beach, you have some fun in the sun. This isn't meant for blistering trap speeds, waking up your neighbors, it's just meant to be a fun in the sun car. When you look at this car without looking at it as a sports car or as a muscle car or whatever you wanna call this, 
if you don't look at this car as a performance car, this car is fantastic. It looks good. It drives well enough. This is a good cruising car. That's all it is. This captures the essence of the first gen Mustang where it's just meant for going down and getting a soda pop with your friends. That's it. That's all this car is and all this car really should be. I'm walking on sunshine. Whoa, it ought to feel good. Hey, all right now, it's ought to feel good. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Toyota of Naperville for letting me take out their 2009 Ford Mustang V6 automatic convertible. They are absolutely awesome. They've been helping me get these reviews for well over two years now. They have a very impressive inventory. They get new stuff in all the time, and this just happens to be one of their used vehicles. So huge shout out to them. Their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.